I don't think that we met. I'm Sarah. Niles. Hi. Hi. It feels very good being able to give my thoughts on a new movie. In a perfect world, I'd be making a video on Tenet in a couple weeks. But unfortunately, such a world will never exist. Thankfully, Hulu has gifted us a nice little holdover in the form of Palm Springs. Palm Springs is the first feature film of Max Barbacow. I think I'm saying his name correctly. It actually premiered back in Sundance in January and is the most expensive film ever bought for distribution out of Sundance for over $20 million dollars. Somehow Sony was able to buy Whiplash's distribution rights for only $3 million. Pretty astounding considering Whiplash is probably one of the five best movies of the 2010s. There should be a lot of reviews for Palm Springs that touch on the technical side of things, but when it comes to movies, I tend to mostly focus on the character strength and the message being put forth, and that is what this video is going to be mostly centered around. If you find that approach interesting and enjoy this video, remember to subscribe so you can get similar treatment for more upcoming films. Now getting into the film itself, I didn't know too much about Palm Springs going into it. I heard about the time loop premise and saw some of the reviews which are just pouring praise down on the film. And that was about it. Groundhog's Day and Edge of Tomorrow are incredible films, so the time loop premise certainly has had success in the past. But I was skeptical about how Palm Springs could use it in a new and interesting way. For me, Palm Springs did fall quite a bit short of those two films, but it was still pretty good. For starters, Andy Samberg and Kristen Milioti were excellent together as Niles and Sarah. I hadn't watched Samberg since Popstar and haven't seen Milioti since Jesse Plemons had her locked up in a video game. But both were very, very good. Especially Milioti, she gave her character a very subtle vulnerability and guilt, mostly with her eyes, which is not something most actors can pull off. Andy Samberg, when kept in his comedic realm, is always excellent, and although he clearly does not have the dramatic range of his co-star, he was believable when he needed to be, which is sometimes all that's really required. I especially love the first wedding night where he gives a speech and dances and becomes a social chameleon. That was a superb way to start his character off. And speaking of Whiplash, J.K. Simmons also stops by and is wonderful as always. He's the key to probably my favorite scene in the movie when we see him at peace in his backyard watching his son water dog shit. And by the way, during that scene, just because of the deepness in his voice, I thought I was listening to Sam Elliott in A Star Is Born. I mean, if you close your eyes and listen, the philosophical delivery really makes him sound like Sam Elliott's character in A Star Is Born. The chemistry between the actors and the many funny moments make Palm Springs definitely worth the watch, and it's only around 80 minutes, and I personally love little short movies around that length. It's a very tough movie not to enjoy at some level. Now what keeps it from being a truly great movie, in my view, is how they try to deliver the message of the story. As I'm sure most of you recognized very early on, Palm Springs is about nihilism. The dialogue makes this known in a very heavy-handed way, and the main character's name is literally Niles. I'm not sure I would have gone in that direction in regards to the name. I think it's a bit much, but that's just me. When we meet Niles and Sarah, both of them are stuck in a nihilistic loop. Niles is literally stuck in a time loop where all he does is eat, drink, and fuck his days away, and Sarah also, as she tells Niles, fucks around and drinks too much. There's an argument to be made they're actually hedonists. In Sarah's case, she actually betrays her sister for pleasure, but I suppose it's not too important of a distinction. At countless points in the movie, Niles tells Sarah that nothing matters and they should just indulge their situation as best as possible. He even says through a joke that there is no God, which was an odd thing to sneak in there. I'm not totally sure if there was a point in him saying that outside hammering home the nihilism theme. Felt a little bit random to me. I was very surprised to see this theme in the movie. It is not one to be easily confronted. I actually have a video on Collateral which deals explicitly with the topic of nihilism. I think that movie handles it in a deeper way, but I applaud Palm Springs for challenging the relational symptom of nihilism. The surface level message being delivered is not hard to decipher. Niles has been wasting away in the time loop because everything he does is lacking meaning. Sex is the device they use to communicate this. He's hooked up with Sarah many times, but when he actually learns about her and gets a good look at her qualities and her faults, he starts to see her as more than just a fleeting moment of pleasure. At the end of the film, Niles decides that it would be better to die in hopes of living a meaningful relationship with Sarah than to stay in the time loop and indulge his appetites for eternity. In J.K. Simmons' great scene, we are given a similar message. During Roy's Cokefield night with Niles, he says, I wish I could live like this forever. But as time goes on, 
He recognizes that his role as a husband and as a father, although very difficult at times, is what really gives his life meaning. If anything, Palm Springs to me is about the nature of relationships and what they should ideally look like. Now for whatever reason, they decided to send this message of meaningful relationships inside of a nihilistic envelope, if you will, which I think was a mistake. Nihilism as a belief structure is well defined by Tom Cruise's character in Collateral. Please watch that movie if you haven't yet, it is a masterpiece. Tom Cruise's character is a hitman in that movie, and he justifies his murders with a nihilistic message, and he makes a very, very good case. He basically says, if every human is forgotten within 100 years and we're just little specks on some rock floating around in space, why does it matter if I end someone's life a little early? The person's existence is just as meaningless stretched over 40 years as it is 80. This is where Palm Springs falls a little bit short for me. When Niles and Sarah are stuck in the time loop, their actions truly are meaningless. Whatever they do will be undone. They can crash a guy's plane and run into trucks head on with the knowledge that they aren't really hurting anyone. When Niles and Sarah leave the loop, the question of nihilism is still not resolved. Yes, their actions now have consequences, and yes, I think they'll both live their lives in a more disciplined fashion, but the thesis of nihilism is not seriously confronted. Niles and Sarah are back in the world and their clocks have resumed ticking down, but that does not indicate their actions have meaning again. In fact, there's grounds to say their actions now have less meaning. At least in the time loop, the wake up every day for eternity and what they did in their previous cycle will have consequences for each other, at the very least. Now once they die, their love and their actions will be washed away by time, just as Vincent describes in Collateral. That is the true case of nihilism, and Palm Springs stays away from entering a direct conflict with that case, which was disappointing for me because I thought they might give it a try early on, but I did really like the relationship message, which again, is more of a symptom of accepting nihilism. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to leave your thoughts on Palm Springs in the comments. Opposing opinions are especially encouraged. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to hear my opinion on the messages of other movies, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks again for stopping by.